Okay, we're starting. Uh, so we're starting now. We're okay. All right, cool. And I have to like stand here, right? Uh, you can sit whatever. Just do, do whatever you need to do. Hello, viewers at home. My name is Kai Hendry, and I'm going to give a talk about <laughs> PHP. <laughs> No, it, it's, th it's those people there that are more important. Actually, no, you guys are just important. So my, um, my, my initial problem, and, my, and that video is here, was that I was struggling to deploy PHP on a lot of servers. I'm not into clustering. I think clustering is evil. So um, I have found a nice way to deploy PHP, and I wanted to share it with you guys. So yeah, my previous video was a cry for help. If you see someone like, th like me in the video, he is in trouble, just send him a message of love. Don't let him do what he was doing. He went crazy, I think, didn't he? And I, I told you what I was looking for. I was looking at a way of deploying to PHP. I was looking at a way of reducing the comp complexity, you know, deploying. Typically what people do um, w was, I guess, deploy Nginx with PHP on a Debian server. I mean, how do you guys deploy PHP? Do you have any idea? Does it really work for you guys? I use Docker. Use Docker, okay. Well, I'm gonna propose a Docker type solution with you guys. So it won't be, won't be terribly new for you. <clears throat> I, I also, since Let, Let's Encrypt came out, I, I wanted to make sure that my sites that I, I load up have SSL immediately. Uh, I didn't want to mess around. And with, with Let's Encrypt sort of le Nginx plugs, plugins, I couldn't really figure it out. It looked a bit too complex. Same with Apache. I hate that stuff. So, so basically, um, I have now a good solution using CoreOS. Who knows what CoreOS is? No one, OK? CoreOS is basically a, a Linux distribution that, that just runs Docker. With the added benefit is that CoreOS randomly reboots. <laughs> it doesn't quite randomly reboot. It reboots in order to upgrade itself. So if like um, even a distribution that's just Linux and Docker, the Linux has to be updated, security patch for one reason or another. And the way it does it is that CoreOS sort of downloads the updates and has another partition and then reboots. And it's a bit complicated, but um, I think Rancho OS or, or something is probably better than Core OS, but, um, but Core OS is available on DigitalOcean. That's why I use it. I use Systemd. Who knows what Systemd is? It's a rocking way to manage your, your services. I'll show you a little bit about it. I use Docker. Who knows what Docker is? It's like a bloated version of, for containers, but it's pretty cool. Um, and then I'm using also Caddy. Who knows what Caddy is? Caddy is a new web server. Uh, it's based on Golang's HTTP uh, implementation. And the cool thing about that is that when HTTP 2 comes out, I think it's going to have one of the best implementations, I dare say. And the cool thing about Caddy is that it can also do some other stuff. I'll show you later. And I wanted to boast that the setup here, besides me setting up the DNS and, and booting up a DigitalOcean uh, instance, all the config is about 30 lines to set up my, my machines. Um, is that good? I think so. Can you beat it? I hope not. No, I hope you can, because then I'll get better. Um, here are the configs. Maybe it's best for me just to use the configs instead of me trying to explain to you what, what, what they do. Um, well, I can quickly show you. This is what a systemd service file looks like. In the old days, they had these things called init scripts, or RC, is it called RC5 init scripts? And they're basically a shell script describing how a process starts, how it, how it gets stopped, and, such an, and how it gets reloaded and restarted. In today's, in today's world, in the modern world, 2016 world, we have system D. And the system D has this uh, cruft to say when it gets started, and like after Docker, because it depends on Docker, and it has all these different lines. And this is actually a very complicated one. Usually it's just an exec start saying what is the binary to run. But this one's a bit complicated because what, why is it so freaking complicated? It's because before it starts, it actually pulls down the PHP image. 
And it's a little bit complicated because of the, the binds to the web root and things like that. And it's a little bit complicated because if a Docker pull doesn't work, it restarts every five seconds until it does. And Docker and, and Docker pull can sometimes not work because maybe the network isn't isn't ready or the network is down, and that happens surprisingly often. Okay, um, what is what is my next slide? Oh, um, well, my next slide was was I wanted to just do do a quick demo for you guys. So, can you guys offer me a prayer for the the live demo gods? Because this never really works, does it? This never really works, and. How much time do I have? Okay, so first step, I'm going to create a DNS record. Who uses Amazon Route 53? I'm going to call this PHP. Oh no, I'm not. Actually, that's a bad idea. I'm going to, I'm going to set up a Core OS instance. For some reason, DigitalOcean asked me to use the alpha version, but I'm not going to use the alpha version. I'm not going to use the $20 or the $640. I'm going to use the $5 version. I'm going to choose Singapore because I'm not an idiot. I hate people that you use the servers. Who uses a server outside Singapore? I hate you. None of you? Thank God. I hate you. I usually watch Netflix. Netflix is available. No. And oh, one of the dumbest things I've seen in my life is this whole, like, spawn four droplets. Why would you want to spawn more than one droplet in a location is beyond my... It's beyond. It's just so dumb. It's unbelievable. But anyway, they want you to, to be dumb so that they earn more money from your dumbness. Don't be dumb. So, oh, I did something stupid. Sorry. I didn't, I didn't name. The important thing is to name your, your droplet with the right host name. But this is cool because DigitalOcean takes only a few seconds to start up something. Not. Um, okay. So I'm going to give me a name for a host name. Give me a name for a machine. Something really interesting. How do you name your machines? Wombat. OK, I'm going to call it wombat.natalian.org, which is my uh, domain. OK, now that should hopefully work. So what happens is I set up a core OS instance with the right, uh, what do you call it? domain. And the domain is important because that's how SSL works. It, um, well, let's encrypt rather. Let's encrypt queries that domain. And then once that domain sort of matches up in a DNS way, then um, it gives you the SSL cert. Then I copy that IP uh, to my DNS hoster thing, which is called root 53. And root 53 is pretty good, actually. I recommend it. It's better than DreamHost. But then again, probably anything's better than DreamHost. So, OK, so I've got the DNS entry in there. And hopefully, it's going to update pretty quickly. And here is my new machine running CoreOS. Oh, I should probably get a bigger ST big. Is that, can you read that, kind of? OK, all I'm going to do now is copy this, this configuration, which amounts to less than, um, what do you call it? What did I say? Less, less than 30 lines of code. OK, so the caddy file controls the web server. And the, and the, the web server just says um, what the root directory is and start PHP. It's kind of default. OK, let me start <coughs> the caddy service. Oops. What do, you, what do we call it? Wombat.natalian.org. So we, what you should be seeing is that once you start the service, it, it pulls the Docker, Docker thing down and runs it. And <clears throat> with any luck, this would have worked. So wombat.natalian.org. Oops. Oh, I know why it's not working. <laughs> So let's do the, the important sort of hello world in PHP, as you all know, is PHP info. <laughs> Sorry. <it's laughs> 
SSL, PHP, okay, it's not running the latest PHP 7, but I'm not, I'm, I'm a bit conservative about running PHP 7. I don't know if it sucks yet. Does PHP 7 rock or? Anyway, I'm using 5.6. So there you have it. I think, um, I dare say, that, that configuration file was six lines. The, um, the whole thing that sort of pulled down and manages the, um, the Docker thing is 18 lines. That's like 18 plus 6 is 24 lines of code to manage everything. And the cool thing about this is that CoreOS, as I mentioned, keeps up to date. And then when it, uh, when it um, restarts the service, the PHP um, container, whatever, keeps up to date with that, with that pull. Sorry, I did something weird there. So all I need to do now is just focus on my PHP code. The, what do you call it, the container, the, th the, the PHP um, interpreter, there's probably a, a technical name for this. It just runs my app. And I, have to, and I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about SSL. I don't have to worry about Linux updates. I don't have to worry about my wife. No way I have to worry about her. I have to keep on worrying about her all the time. So there you have it. Um, and, to, and I can also probably show you the padlock. Probably proves that this, is, this has come down from Let's Encrypt. So, I mean, the SSL cert is uh, is actually cached and by caddy into this like root dot caddy directory. Where did it come from? You must you must <coughs> you need to issue the SSL cert in the first place, right? Yeah. Well, inside caddy has this sort of like let's encrypt um, endpoint or something, and it does a request and then. It receives it receives the, the cert from uh, Let's Encrypt and then and puts it in the right place, and makes and gets everything running straight away. Exactly. So Let's Encrypt is like a new way of doing it, and interestingly, Amazon Amazon has a similar service, but obviously it only works with Amazon CloudFront or something. Okay, going back to my. In, um, was that all of it? Thank you for that live demo. I have a video doing exactly the same, <coughs> the same thing. If you didn't follow or, or if you want another video, this video will be online. So, uh, uh, sorry, I really want to start back from the SSL point. So mm -hmm. For the cert, you typically need to pay and get it issued. Yes, but things have changed. We probably need to tell us more about How that. that. How was oh, OK. So there's this thing called Let's Encrypt. Um, actually, I don't really know the technical details, um, but the way Let's Encrypt, uh, yeah, it's quite technical, but <laughs> Let's Encrypt allows you to issue certificates. It has their CA installed everywhere, and it lets you issue certificates based on your domain. All oh, right, it's interesting. Uh, I think it's... I think it's Google and Mozilla, the usual assholes. No, they're great. I love those companies. Uh, <laughs> it's a new. It's a fairly new thing. I think it only launched like, like a month and a half ago, maybe two months ago. And it's got good backing. And previously, when you ordered an SSL certificate, they usually emailed you, like emailed webmaster at my domain. But now you don't have to do that. It just verifies it on your DNS. Caddy managed to get the private key on to the instance. Well, it just generates one. And sends it over to yeah. Let's encrypt. Yeah. And then, and then the it caches it, it on your mach on your in a, in a dot directory. Then anybody could do a man in the middle attack, right? Because what? Based on the domain name caching. Sorry. So uh, when you issue the last encrypt certificate, right? Uh, actually, the the script running on your server will ping the less encrypt server. Mm -hmm. Then the less encrypt server will ping back to your That's endpoint. 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 Ah. So if you are doing it on a live server, you actually have to take your server down, okay, run a KD or Nginx or Apache. They have different modules to it. Then uh, once they verify on their server side, verify your, uh, your domain is valid, this is a valid domain, this server is actually serving this domain, 
then it will issue directly the certificate back to you. As it's basically saying that I own the host name, yep. send it over to me, and yep. it basically pushes it to you. Yes. So the verification. So it's, I think it's kind of interpreted as a lower form of a normal certificate because a normal certificate has more checks by I, the more check being checking your email address. But to be honest, that's not true. And does it work for wildcards? No, it doesn't. It doesn't work for wildcards. But they are trying to address that problem. I saw someone said saying to me, oh, they're going to address that problem. Yeah. But the cool thing is, the cool thing is, you don't really need wildcard. I mean, you do need wildcard if you have a website. Like I have a website that basically takes queries by subdomain, which is an idiotic way to do a web app. Um, but if you did it the bad way, then it then it becomes a problem because there's a, there's a couple of seconds to get the SSL cert. But if you have a an umpteen subdomains and you know them in advance, it's not a problem. It's really not a problem. Um, so, what are the pitfalls of my approach? My 24 lines of code to rule the world? Um, yeah, I, I have a problem where it depends on Docker Hub, and I just hate Docker Hub. And I haven't figured out a way of seeing what image I'm running. Maybe you guys know. Oh crap, I don't even know where I am anymore. I'm here. Like when you when you run a Docker image and you get you get like a hash to describe the image, I'm not too sure how you bubble that up to the to the web app. Because I I want to know I'm running A072 because I want to know the versions of my the images that I'm running on, on all my different hosts. So anyway, that's it's a problem I probably will figure out one day. Put a cron, get that from yeah, and then right push it somewhere. But I have another problem. Is like when you're on Docker Hub, uh, like this image is called um, oh crap. What is this image called? It's called I hate Docker Hub. I hate it. 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 It's called ABO. Oh, sorry, sorry. You're looking. It's called ABO Soft PHP. Like I'm here. On, on on Docker Hub, how do you see the latest image hash? I, I don't I don't know. I is it here? No, it doesn't tell you there. Huh? No, it doesn't. It's like I hate this website. So pushes it to tag it. Yeah, it's not. Anyway, my, the main the thing that annoys me, I haven't figured that problem out. Yeah, and I haven't figured that one out. So um, to wrap up, <coughs> sorry, got no more water left. To wrap up, oh, I mean, Ca Caddy actually does a lot, and I didn't really get into it, but this is the Caddy website. It's what I love about it is that you know, unlike a, a Apache configuration, nginx configuration. You, you can do things in just like you know five lines. Like this is this is the the caddy file. All it says is like host name. Uh, t when you do with Let's Encrypt, you're supposed to have like um, like a, an email just to say you can recover something. Not a biggie. And then you say what the root is. You say the PHP thing. Blah blah blah. So with with huh. It just it actually starts it up. It does it has it has some code to, to manage the process or something. I really I really like Caddy. Um, it's a new web it's a new web server. It does automatic HTTPS as you can see there. Sorry, the font renders really badly on my browser. It's it's um, its syntax is really easy. It, it's even got like quite cool things like um, like a very simple syntax to um, set up. Is it called a FIFO, like a file system FIFO for a WebSocket? So you can map a WebSocket to, to a file system FIFO. I think it's called a FIFO. FIFO fum. I mean, it's just like one line. And, and instantly you, have what you can start writing a WebSocket service that sort of hooks into one of your shell utilities. It's pretty awesome. It's also it's even got like really cool things that you don't even get in in a fully blown HTTPD. Like for example, in my business, I I, I did, 
my customers download assets, but I need to know if they completely downloaded the asset. Like say they're downloading a 100 megabyte movie file. I want to know if they downloaded the entire 100 megabyte movie file. And sometimes that's really hard to do on Nginx and, 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 and Apache. And here it's very easy. It does JSONP, it does, it does IP filter, it does all sorts of really cool, it even does uh, vhosts. It's a very good, and, and it's, it's, it's written in Golang, and it's got HTTP2, which is going to be awesome. Um, <laughs> wait, is that it? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, guys. Please ask me questions. Um, I know you might not have them ready, or you might just, just email me or contact me. Just feel free. I'm happy to answer you. You don't have to answer. ask me now, because I want to order an Uber now. Okay. <laughs> Any questions, guys? Wasn't that awesome? Was it? <laughs> I just, I mean, it took me a couple of minutes to, to spawn up an SSL PHP site. Have you never done this before? Haven't you, haven't you felt the pain of setting up a PHP instance? Heroku doesn't run in Singapore. Didn't you hear my rule that anyone who doesn't run their server in Singapore is an idiot? 